And lesson 70 is the last part of my Watch It's a Hustle, written in 1980, January, after my first studies of the banking system malfunction, and my analysis and how to fix it. Just as the demand for a railway ticket furnishes railway management with a perfect indication of the capacity required, so does money furnish industry with demand for the capacity of goods required. It makes no more sense to argue that because there are only 100 tickets printed, only 100 may travel while the other seats remain unused, than to say that because there's insufficient money, many, undesir many desirable things can't be done. The proper business of the bank and ticket department is to facilitate the distribution of the product in accordance with the public's desire and to transmit that desire to those operating the industry. There can be no interest in the efficiently structured economy of the future since that would be taking the credit from the man who scored it and giving it to the man who didn't. That's stealing, reaping where you do not sow. I suppose interest got started when the father left his estate and gave each son a bag of seeds saying go forth and prosper. First son found good land and reaped enough to feed his two kids, save next year's seed and have a reserve. The others all go broke. First gets hit with a storm, next by a tornado. The other has eight kids who eat all his grain. At planting time they ask, may we use your credit, some of your reserve seeds? In his right ear the rich brother hears whispered, give the use of your credit and seeds. It's the best bet that you'll all survive. In his wrong ear he hears whispered, why give the use of your credit? It's yours. You've earned it. Rent your credit, and you will increase your store with no extra work. And who knows, someday you might have so much coming in on the rental of your credit, you won't have to plant any seeds yourself. You can be unemployed and live off the interest. You won't have to pull your weight. You'll get some of his credit. After all, if the weak want to survive, they'll agree. It's their choice. It's their hell. When the rich brother decided to demand interest from his brothers, he created the economic game to the death described earlier and acquired so much so soon that all soon lost sight of the optimal strategy, love thy brother. And I should have mentioned that mort gage meant death gamble at that time. I guess I didn't know it then. If we are to pursue optimal strategy, the exponential function that perpetuates poverty amidst plenty must be dismantled. Then inflation will disappear as the misrepresentation on the dial disappears and unemployment disappears as the maximum number of workers get to pull their weight. There is no satisfactory reason for preventing even the weakest from contributing what they can. There will be no such thing as scoring too little wealth to be allowed to continue to try. There will be let every little power source be working and we will score the brightest light. We need simply to revert to the physical realities so that all men may exercise their power to produce their energy and the total power of the nation is maximized. Right? Everybody working, maximum power, like in a war. Our power should be bounded only by physical constraints and not by some banker's fudge factor of what we saved. One need only study the function of the stationary engineer to see how a properly run industry should work. Louis Evin wrote this example of the Quebec social credit movement. When the machines produce a lot and the steam pressure goes down on the meter, the stationary engineer adds coal to the furnace. If the machines produce less, well, he would put in less coal. The amount of steam delivered to industry is decided by the industrial demand. The banker delivers the financial credit that enables industry to obtain the real credit, the materials, the tools, and people needed for work. The banker, like the stationary engineer, should deliver that credit energy to maintain industrial activity and leave up to competent authorities the care of guiding the consumers in their choice. If either the banker or the stationary engineer doesn't deliver credit or steam energy according to demand to industry, if either raised or lowered the delivery according to their wish, they could regulate industrial activity. If, as in the boom of the 20s, they delivered lots of credit power, the machines would work. If, as in the depression, they restricted delivery, the machines would slow down, even stop. They would make of steam or credit a power that dominates and not that serves. 
The stationary engineer has learned to make the steam serve. The banker has learned to make the credit dominate. All it takes is the good sense of the engineer to understand that the industrial demand should regulate the delivery of power, and not the delivery of power regulate the industrial demand. The problem exists because keeping the less fortunate short of funds assures bankers their profits and jobs. The solution is at hand. Once computers start to accurately keep track of wealth in the system, the misrepresentations will be impossible. Yet we need not wait. Any monetary system that does not use interest is necessarily linear and trivial to implement. They could have easily avoided the depression by having every manufacturer who owned collateral issue receipts for that wealth, verified by an accepted official. As that asset depreciates, the receipts must be retired out of circulation. Those receipts are just as good as money while the asset is there to back them up. Better, they can't inflate. A banana grower in Brazil would readily accept those receipts because, he's, because he knows that with enough of them, he can collect the wealth backing them up, just like a properly banked casino game. So, the essential question is, why represent our wealth with their receipts for a fee when we can represent our wealth with our receipts for free? When that banana grower buys our wealth, he is paying for the energy cost of the man, the energy cost of the materials, and the energy cost of the tool. No more will he have to pay for the non-energy cost of the interest. We now have the simplest definition of inflation. When the Bank of Canada raised interest rates, they raised the non-energy cost of our living. And when we pay more for no wealth, that's inflation. Paying more for real energy costs is a barter effect, not inflation. If a casino banker tried to tell his players that their chips had inflated, odds are they'd beat him up. I don't suggest that we go beat up the bankers for having distorted the real energy picture, but the secret's now out. The power reading on their money dial is distorted and must be corrected. It makes no sense to adjust the value of our wealth to the number of their dollars through inflation or deflation when we can adjust the number of dollars to the value of our wealth with neither effect. As a Canadian money systems engineer and professional gambler with 10 years inflation-free banking experience, I protest the banker's mismanagement of the industrial machine and the misrepresentation of the real energy wealth in the game. What baffles me is how the banker's strategy of slowing down the industrial machine can go unchallenged by men of science and engineers who know the real potential has yet to be harnessed. No system of counting our money will stand in the way of the liberation of our industrial power. After all, we're only wrestling with the banker's bad arithmetic. A scientific monetary system will be trivial to implement, upgrading a software from bad to good. Unrestrained by financial fetters, the resources of modern production will be sufficient to provide plenty for all at the expense of less and less labor. The problem at hand is the harnessing of all the power. All those unemployed are proof that bankers and economists don't know how to harness all the power. The economic ship is going down because their money dial says no power. They are wrong about the real power. Engineers handle the real power rating of the engine. Economists handle the money power on the dial. I understand both the engine and the dial. So watch out, banks. There's an engineer working on your faulty dial. While a minority opinion is not necessarily right, a right opinion on a novel problem always begins with a minority of one. It's time to say amen when the engineer asks for your support in order to fix the engine that, keep, that gives you wealth. I need your, so be it, I need your amen, Johnny Engineer Termel. So watch it all you want, sir. It's not a hustle. January 1980, the watch it's a hustle, my first engineering analysis on the faulty banking system.